Hello everyone, Dana Sahir with Action VFX. Today we are going to create a rainy scene effects in Adobe After Effects. We will be using our stone cloud assets as well as the rain asset collections which includes paint on ground elements, paint on glass, and the rain itself. This tutorial will focus on creating a gloomy scene from a bright day shot, creating water puddles, and of course compositing our rain element. There's gonna be a lot of stuff to cover, so without further ado, let's begin. Okay, so what we need first is of course the plate. For rainy day conversion, you may want to get an overcast or cloudy scene so you don't have to worry about hard shadows on your shot. So I have this background originally from HDRI Heaven that I have augmented using camera projection in Cinema 4D as my backplate. So the first thing we are going to do is to isolate the sky from the ground so we can color correct them separately and then add some clouds. Thankfully, the sky is bright and has different hues than the ground. So what we can do is to bring extract effects and we are going to select the blue channel and then extract the black point until the sky is isolated. And then let's invert it. Great, so we have the ground isolated. However, we still have the edges on the trees look a bit chipped. So let's get Refine Soft Matte and change the edge radius to 0.5. So now we have the edges a bit soft. However, this end up reintroducing some of the sky inside of the tree. So what we want to do is to mask out that area only. So let's create a mask around the edges of the tree. And then press E. And in the Refine Soft Matte effects, we are going to click this plus button at the bottom. So now the mask is only affecting the Refine Soft Matte effects. Now let's start color correcting this layer. Get Lumetri Color. And on Curves, let's darken the middle and also pull down the highlights. And then we're going to go to the color wheels and we're going to bring our shadow down and make it blue. And then let's add hue and saturation, and then desaturate it a bit. Perfect. So now we have made the shot darker to make it more like a heavy rainy day. However, we can see, thanks to our extract, some of the alpha holes on our ground and building on the back. So let's fix that by duplicating our layer here. And on the below layer, select the mask and turn it to subtract. And then delete the extract and the refine matte. So now we have the hole filled with our layer. Perfect. And then let's create the sky background. We are going to use the same sky that we had before. So let's just duplicate the layer, rename it sky, delete the existing mask, and then we're going to go to the Lumetri again to make it even darker than before. And then desaturate it a bit more to make it less, less blue. Okay, so it's looking great, but we still have the highlights on our cloud. So we're going to cover them up by using our stone cloud collection. So let's drag one of the cloud elements into the shot, put it above the sky layer. And then let's add more of the cloud. And then let's bring curves effect into our cloud. And basically we are going to go to the individual RGB channel and match the color of our cloud to the sky background. Once I finished color matching one of the clouds, then I copy the curves and paste it on the other cloud. Next, we're gonna add a lightning layer that came from our storm cloud collection to give our cloud some lightning. So let's bring this lightning layer and scrub the timeline until we see the lightning. And then let's turn it to additive and position the lightning to the sky. And then what we will do later at the end is to create some exposure change to help sell the lightning when it appears. But now we're just going to leave it for a second because we are going to add some wind movement to the three leaves. So let's add adjustment layer and we're going to add turbulent displays. Change the amount to 10 and the scale down to 7 and then add keyframes on the offset at the beginning of our composition and then go to the end and then move the offset. So then the turbulent noise would move and displace the shot to make it look like the leaves are moving. 
let's rename this wind. Now currently everything is affected by the turbulence, so it's not just the leaves, but everything has this displacement happening. So to fix that, let's create a mask around the edges of our tree leaves. And then feather it. And then let's add some mask for the leaves on the middle. So now we have our displacement only affecting the leaves, making the leaves look like it is affected by a wind. Next, we're gonna make the ground look a bit wet and glossy using CC Gloss. So let's duplicate our backplate, name it Wet Map, delete all the effects and mask to make it brand new. And then let's create a curve to create contrast on the shot. And then disable the view because we just want to use this layer as a map for our CC Gloss. Then let's create adjustment layer. Let's name it wet ground and add CC glass and then go to the surface and change the bump map to the wet map and then FX and mask and then change the property to red and then turn the softness to 2, height to 2, displacement to 12 and then on the shading get the roughness to 0 0.3 and the metalness to 95. You can also play with the lights to control the amount of brightness on the effect. And then let's mask it to make the effects only on the ground. So now you have this glossy effects, which may not be that visible, but it adds that extra punch to the look of the ground. Now let's create the water puddle. Let's duplicate the background again and delete all the effects and mask of this layer to start fresh. And then let's rename it Puddle Alpha. And then just like the sky, we're gonna use the ground coloration to create the shape of our puddles. So let's solo the layer for a moment and add in extract. Turn the channels to red and then increase our black point and also the black softness. Okay, so everything looks great so far, but we still have a very empty area on the right there. We want to add the puddle there too, so let's add another extract. Turn it to red again, but this time I'm going to play with the white point and then I want to make sure the second extract only affects that side of the shot. So let's create a mask for that area. And then once again, on the effects layer, press plus to include that mask into the second extract. So now the mask only affecting the second extract. And then here I just play around with the feather of the mask. And then next, I'm gonna add refine soft matte and then change this to 1. So now we have our water puddles edges to be a bit smoother. And then I'm going to get rid of the upper part of the layer by masking it and then turn it to subtract, feather it. And now if we go to the alpha channel, we have this. So let's create the actual puddle water. Create a new solid, make it brownish gray, name it puddle water, and then put it below our puddle alpha and then change it to alpha inverted. So now the solid is filling in the puddles. Next, we're gonna make a water ripple effect on the puddles because we're gonna have the rain hitting them. So let's add CC drizzle. And now you're gonna have these water ripples on your solid. Change the drip rate to 100. And then we're gonna fix the perspective of our solid here by using corner pin to make the water ripples facing to the ground like it's supposed to. And then what we want is to mask out our water puddle on the horizon there. So let's add mask and change it to subtract. However, because of the corner pin effects, the masking is a bit offset from what it's supposed to. So you may have to eyeball it to get to the correct place. Another thing you may see here is this weird wiggly edges on our puddle. That is because of the displacement from our CC drizzle. So let's reduce that to zero. And then let's feather our mask. And then disable the solo to see the whole shot. Awesome. Now we're gonna add another ripple, but this time on the ground, not the puddle. So create a new solid and add fractal noise. And then change it to swirly. Increase the contrast to 200 and brightness to minus 125. And then we're gonna scale it down to make it really small. And then I'm gonna right click on the evolution 
and let's add expression of time times 1250. So the fractal will be animating really fast. And then let's add some blur and then change the blending mode to additive. And then I just want to adjust it to make it a bit darker using curves. Now let's copy our portal alpha, put it on top, and then we're gonna alpha mat our ripple to it and reduce the opacity a little bit. So now we have our fractal only appearing on the ground. And then the same as the previous puddle, we're gonna corner pin it to match the perspective of our ground. Now we're really going to sell the wetness of the ground by adding some reflection on it. So let's duplicate our backplate, put it on top, and then delete the existing mask. And then what we want to do is to mask the object that we want to have reflection, like for example this box here, and then flip it upside down. And then let's duplicate the layer, delete the mask, and do another one for the other boxes. Basically, I want to keep duplicating the layer and create more reflections for all the boxes in the shop. Once I have all the reflections that I want, I'm going to pre-comp them and then I'm going to mask out the bottom part of that pre-comp and subtract it and then add some weather. So now we have this reflection sort of fading on the distance. And then we want to reduce the opacity a bit so it's not too opaque. Okay, since there will be a big rain happening, we want the reflection to be affected by the rain. So let's add turbulent displays to our reflection. Make the size to 7 and add right click on evolution and then type time times 250. Add a bit of Gaussian blur. So now we have the reflection wiggle around as if it's affected by the rain. And now we are going to split the reflection into two. One is on the puddle which will be clearer and the other is on the ground which would be more faded. So let's duplicate the Poodle Alpha again, put it on top, and we want to Alpha inverted our reflection to it. So now the reflection only appear on the puddle. And for the other reflection, we're just going to duplicate what we already have here. And this time we want to switch it to Alpha Matte. And then let's play around with the opacity so it's not too opaque. Perfect, now we are finally going to add the rain. First, we are going to use the raindrops on ground collection for our ground. So let's bring this one here, scale it down, and then we're gonna create a circular mask around it, and then feather it so we don't have hard edges, and then turn the blending mode to add. And then we're gonna start populating the scene. So I'm going to duplicate this, put it on the side, and then offset the timing to make it a bit different. A tip is to use the high angled ones for the rain that are closer to the camera and the lower angled ones for the ones far away. Okay, once it is populated, you want to pre-compose to make our project more organized and then change the pre-compose to additive. Next, we're gonna add some of that rain hitting the ground on our boxes. So get one of the low angle rain on ground collection and we're gonna do the same thing, scale them down, turn it to additive and then mask it and start populating the scene. So for some of the angled position, I used transform effect and then use the skew to match the perspective. And then after we populate the scene, pre comp them again, just like the previous one. And then we're gonna turn the pre comp to additive and turn down the opacity a little bit. Let's also reduce the opacity for the rain on ground so it's not too opaque. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is we are going to add some water flowing on the surface of the boxes. To do that, we are going to use our rain on glass collection 
So let's drag in this one and turn it to add, scale it down. And we're going to start adding these on the boxes. And then basically you want to mask it to remove the hard edges and just mix and match a bunch of these other elements to populate the shot. Okay, to wrap it up, let's add the final rain effects using our rain collection. So we're going to drag in the distant rain asset first and then turn it to additive, reduce the opacity a little bit. So this is basically the rain that is far from the camera. And then let's mask in just the upper part here. And then for the rain that is closer to the camera, we are going to use the rain close element and then change it to additive. Reduce the opacity a bit so we can see our shot. Lastly, we are going to add the lightning glow effects, like I mentioned early in the tutorial. So let's add an adjustment layer. Add exposure effects, and then boost it up, and then animate the opacity to match the animation of the lightning on the cloud. And there you go, creating a rain environment in After Effects. On next week, we are going to continue this shot by adding a person into the scene, so you don't want to mess that up. If you want to purchase the rain collection that I used in this tutorial, you can check out our website at actionvfx.com. At Action VFX, we provide high quality VFX assets for your VFX needs. We have fire, explosions, energy, and many, many others. We also have free assets that you can get on our website. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Let us know in the comment section below if you have any questions or tutorial ideas that you'd like to see next. So, see you next time. Bye-bye.